So this is data taken from a binary star system and what it shows on the y-axis is um, shows on the y-axis the speed of, of two stars that are part of a binary star system uh, versus time on the x-axis. And when I say the, the, the speed, it's, it's, it's a speed relative to us. So positive means moving towards us, negative means moving away from us. And so you can imagine that um, from, if we kind of, let's, let's draw this system. I'm going to move this over a little bit. Um, if I wanted to draw this system, what I would do if I were drawing kind of from the, from the top view is we have uh, one star. It's orbiting about, okay, and so we have a star here that's orbiting about, and we have a another star. Let's draw, let's draw the circle here. It's not orbiting about as as much, and orbiting in the opposite way. So whenever we see one coming towards us, one seeing away, uh, going away from us, uh, notice that. Our point of view is say from from over here, and so we're looking at these at, the, at this object as it's coming around. And as it goes around, so for instance, star star number one is moving towards us, and then sideways, and then away from us, and then sideways, and then towards us, and then away from us, and then towards us, and away from us. And the other star, as it's going around, and you can imagine these these two kind of tied together like with a string as they're kind of skating around, um, and they're both orbiting about the 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 center of mass, which is right which is right there. And so we have that, and the other star is moving away from us and then towards us and away from us and towards us, and we can see that in the purple curve here. This data alone, just measuring, measuring these, these, uh, these speeds, allow us to determine the individual masses of these two objects. Now we can already tell one thing from these from these objects. I mean you can see that that um, the orbit of one of them is much larger than the other one um, and so it actually must be less massive. And the reason it's less massive is essentially the gravitational effect on uh, on star number two, num the purple one. So let's see here. Let me just label these. This is star number one and star number two is here. Um, the, the gravitational effect is smaller. Uh, they have the same interaction, so they actually have the same force, but that same force has less of an effect on star 2 than it has on star 1, and so star 2 must be more massive than star 1. And we can immediately see that. So, so we can immediately see, uh, just from the picture and just from the data sketching it out, that mass of, of 2 has to be greater than mass of one. And any answer that we come to will have to uh, agree, agree with that. Now essentially what we, what we want to do is to determine the mass is we have to apply Kepler's law. And to get Kepler's law, we need a few things. Uh, pretty much we need the distance between the two objects. So we need the distance, say here, between these two objects, which I'll call A. All right, and we can break this up actually into two into into two distances. One distance is the distance from star one to the center of mass, which I'll call a one, and the distance between star two and the center of mass, which I'll call a two. All right, and then and then we just have the the, the total distance between them. A is equal to a one plus a two. All right, so this is the this is the the the, uh, the distance that we want for in Kepler's law, uh, and then we also need the period of the orbit. So we need the we need the period of the orbit, which is the time it takes to go say from zero back to zero. So this time here is the period of the orbit, and from the the look of it, it's a little over two point five. Years, so the period, what let's say, is is two point six years. Okay. Now, in order to get in order to get the sizes of the orbits, let's just let's just talk about let's just talk about a one for for the moment. If we knew the speed of a one of of star one, we should be able to, to relate that speed and the 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 time it takes for it to go around to the distance it takes to go all the way around. And so, pretty much, the speed is just the distance over the time. So, if we do if we say that, that means the speed of star one 
is the distance it travels, which is a full radius, which a full circumference, sorry. So it's 2 pi times the radius, which is a1, all over the time it takes to go all the way around is, is, is p. The this is true for, for speed 2 as well. Um, we'd get v2 is equal to 2 pi a2 over p. All right. Notice a few things we can, we can say here right now. So um, although from our perspective we see it moving towards us and away from us and towards us and away from us, that's what the positive and the negatives mean. And the kind of side-to-side -side motion is measured as zero. If we, from the top view, the actual speed of the star could be constant if it's going in the circular orbit. So what what we really want the actual speed is the maximum speed that we that that we measure so for star 1 that would be here this speed which looks like it's about 21 kilometers per second we do the same thing for star 2 and we measure its speed And this looks to be about 7 kilometers per second. Okay? Okay. So what we see then, first of all, is that the speed 1 is 3 times that of speed 2, which from here, given that p is the same, a1 will have to be equal to three times a2. So that's just one of the things that we'll, that, that, that we'll know. So these two pieces of data imply that, that, uh, um, that, that a1 is three times a2. Now, Another thing we can know from, from the law of gravity is that if the speed of one is larger by a factor of three, then, the, then its mass is less by that same factor. So, so this also immediately implies that, that remember, m2 was, was greater than m1. m2 has to also be three times the mass of one. Okay. Knowing... Now, we know what V1 is, we know what P is, we can find A1, we can find A2, that lets us find A, and P will allow us to find the mass of the star. So, um, in a second movie, I will uh, continue with this calculation.